The saying, youth is wasted on the young, is very much encapsulated in the reality of youth. You have all of these powers at your disposal. You have an amazing hormonal output. You have amazing physical prowess. You are probably at your cognitive best. You have all of this potential, and yet you lack the life experience to make good on it, at least in part. And so you inevitably end up making lots of mistakes and regretting those mistakes despite this prowess. This prowess serves but one purpose in evolutionary terms to reproduce, but the side effect of that is that there are these things that you wish you could have done differently at some point in time. And today I want to talk about the Roaring Twenties, the age group that so many young people fall into these days, not quite teenagers anymore, but also not fully adult, because I observe things that are recurrent. They happen again and again and again, whether it's my generation or the next or the one after. But Zoomers, I think, are in quite the bind. Now, I don't want anyone to think of this as advice. Anyone who's been with me for a while knows my view of advice. I call it the worst vice. The worst vice is advice. Advice is pretty useless, especially as it pertains to general life options, general life trajectories. It's one thing if you have a problem with, I don't know, your back or you lack certain mobility or flexibility in your muscles and ligaments, and you go to a physical therapist to get some counsel and advice. Now, I said advice, but that ceases to be advice functionally because you're going to a specialist who can help you with a specific problem. So in as much as advice serves that purpose, I think it's fine. But broad, general, sweeping statements about what you should be doing in your life, you won't hear anything like that from me. And if you do, please don't look at it as advice. So even though this is a video for everyone to consume, I would say it's broadly addressed to the young folk out there, the young men, the whippersnappers. Because there's a problem with your 20s, and yes, youth is wasted on the young. But it comes down to the specifics here. Of course, you could say people make mistakes, they regret things, whatever. But the one thing that I see a lot of young people doing, not all of them by any means, is taking their 20s for granted. Now, we take a lot of things for granted in our lives. And when you're young, of course, you tend to take things even more for granted, precisely because you possess these amazing powers of youth. Your metabolism is like a furnace. You look the best you could ever look, et cetera, et cetera, at least potentially. But what I've noticed, and it's not just unique to the Zoomers, although I think it's more pronounced in the Zoomer generation, something I observed in my generation, Generation X, but also in millennials is not taking your 20s seriously. Now, guess what? I was very much guilty of this. I largely look at my 20s as a failure. I do. I am somebody who's reporting on this failure for the sake of other generations, you could say. But I just sort of thought things would somehow work out. I did kind of what I wanted to, sort of. But I never had a master plan. I never had a grand idea of what this would all turn into. And so I dabbled here and there in different things. And one of my big goals was to leave the country of my birth, live abroad. And for many years in my 20s and then also in my 30s, I managed to live abroad by becoming a teacher and getting by by those means, although it was always far from lucrative. But I didn't take my 20s seriously. It was pretty directionless, pretty aimless, which is not to say I didn't have my interests. I did. I pursued those interests. I thought a lot of things were interesting. I learned about them. I pursued them. And to this day, I possess greater than average knowledge on those subject matters. But it never occurred to me that I couldn't just be interested in stuff. I needed to direct my life somehow. I need to end up someplace. And youthful as I was, I would ignore the admonitions and warnings of people. I remember one of my landlords in Germany in my 20s, when I told him what I was studying, what I was doing, he referred to it as 
brotlose Kunst, which literally means, if you were to translate it to English, breadless art, which is to say something that is useless. A, a brotlose Kunst is something that doesn't produce anything useful. This guy, by the way, was a doctor with properties, so you could imagine what he thought. So this is not necessarily an admonition towards people who want to study humanities, although these days, given the state of universities, maybe, or social sciences, or even things that are not de facto useful. It's about applying those interests. Because I can think back and think of ways that I could have applied these interests in a much more pragmatic, practical way rather than living in the clouds and hoping that things would somehow work out. Again, I view my 20s largely as a failure. I made lots of mistakes, and the 20s fed into the 30s, and it's all a ripple effect. I didn't ultimately end up in life where I wanted to, or at least where I would have imagined myself to end up. So I'm not saying go study something practical, learn something practical. That's great if you're so inclined. But you are what you are. You can't change your interests. There was no incarnation of myself that was ever going to become a particle physicist or a computer engineer. It just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't in the cards. But I didn't plan things out very well either, given what I could do and what I did know. So if you have interests, make sure that at the very least you navigate them such that you end up applying them in a practical way if that's what you want to do. Or if you come to the conclusion that your interests are totally useless, that they are the embodiment of the breadless art, so to speak, then maybe you can pursue them on the side. Sometimes I think of that myself, that had I just pursued something somewhat more practical, I could have learned all this stuff on the side, especially given the digital age, which... 20 plus years ago was not the same as it is now, but nonetheless was nascent and growing. So much for the practical, what you should be doing with your life. And I'm not telling you what you should be doing with your life. These are just things to pay attention to. Don't squander your 20s just because you're in your 20s and you think you have all the time in the world. You don't. Pretty soon you'll be my age and pretty soon I'll be dead. So that's an issue. But there's another aspect to it and I think it's an aspect that a lot of people talk about, and that is social preparation. It's all well and good that you followed the right path and now you're a successful engineer and you're making bank or whatever it is that you wanted to do or thought would be useful. But economic success, I've observed, is not necessarily a silver bullet for the social woes that can befall an individual later on in life. I'm speaking, of course, of other people. I am not economically successful. Me becoming this itinerant vagrant that was globetrotting, hopping from one country to the next, enjoying different sites and different cultures and just taking inventory of the world, ultimately trying to find a place where he might fit in. And much to my chagrin, many, many years later, I learned that I don't fit in anywhere. I don't fit in any country, any particular culture. I'm not right or left in terms of my politics. And so basically, I'm always an alien no matter where I go. I wish I had grasped that earlier because it would have led to a better decision on my part. Because how you organize yourself socially in your 20s does matter for the long run, for the long term. Because if you are pissing your 20s away in human engagement, whether it's romantic relationships, friendships, whatever it might be, that cannot crystallize into something substantial that has at least the potential of accompanying you during the rest of your life, that's probably not a valuable investment of time on your part. Now, of course, it's a crapshoot. Everything is in life. You take your chances with people. Some people end up disappointing you. But in general, making an effort to forming human interactions, relationships that might have some duration that you can rely on, and vice versa, they can rely on you too, I think is probably the most important lesson I took from my 20s. Because I have to be honest here, when I look back in my 20s, being the socialite that I was, relatively speaking, certainly relative to what I am and where I am now, I don't have a single contact left that I had in my 20s. Now, I know I'm hardly unique in this matter, but 
it's important to build a base for yourself because as much as you can try to monk it, it can be tough at times. Life is difficult. Having friends, having people that you can rely on is an important thing and it shouldn't be neglected. And as everyone has observed, once you leave the university scene, once you leave your 20s, enter your 30s, it becomes harder and harder and harder. And once you're in your 40s, it's pretty much GG. And after that, it's total GG. And I see a lot of people in their 20s just stumbling about, whether it comes to these pragmatic economic issues, which frankly speaking, I know a lot less about, I'd argue, or these issues of the interpersonal. It's very alarming. It's like watching yourself fumble and stumble and trip for the second time in a row. Of course, you're not there anymore. You're not in your 20s anymore. But I know far too many youths these days that are doing just that and telling themselves whatever admonishment they might hear from other people, those more aged, as it were, that they're going to be okay. They're somehow going to land on their feet. Well, I guess it depends on the definition of landing on your feet. But as it's guaranteed, as in it is written into the constitution of nature itself that in your 20s you're going to make a lot of mistakes, I don't think they're necessarily going to land on their feet. And the Zoomer generation is more disconnected than ever. And they are seduced by the counterfeit currency of the online relation. That's not to say that every online relationship lacks substance, but many of them do. And at the very least back then, you tried to cultivate something real. But I know way too many Zoomers and guys in their 20s that are terminally online. And I get why it's easier. It's easier to interact with people. It's easier to strike up conversation. Hell, it's a heck of a lot easier to talk about topics you otherwise would never broach in real life. Absolutely. And in the best case scenario, these online friendships, relationships crystallize into something real. But that's not that common. Ultimately, much of what the internet has to offer is counterfeit. But it is so convincing. Reality is fundamentally less appealing. Hence why it's understandable. But I can't repeat this enough. Your 20s are critical. It's very easy to squander them. Everything has a chain effect. Everything is the result of a concatenation of events that led to the next one. Your 20s were the result of what happened in your teenage years. And your teenage years were preceded by your childhood years. And so on and so forth. So being aware of this and at the very least trying to steer things in the direction that you think will have duration, endurance for the rest of your life, whether it's economically, socially, emotionally, and that's ultimately what I'm trying to get at, looking for things that have endurance, things that can outlast the moment. The moment is beautiful, and as many a wise man has said, the moment is all we have. There's so much more than the moment. Life ultimately is composed of many moments. And so if you want many moments you can enjoy, you have to be the long distance runner. You cannot be the sprinter. The sprinter will almost always fail in my observation. And for the longest time, I was the sprinter and I failed. My life in many regards has been a failure. And I'm here in many ways to warn you, if you're young, to course correct, lest you end up like me or somebody even more shabby if such a thing is imaginable. So your 20s are precious. You will not have them forever. They will wither away and pass you by faster than the blink of an eye, especially if you don't pay attention to them. So something to think about. And none of this is advice. This is observation. I'm not telling you to become an entrepreneur as if every human being on planet Earth wanted to become one. This is just guru talk, of course. Hey, bro, just become an entrepreneur, make lots of money, uh, bro, yeah. By you're 35, you'll be pulling all the punani, uh, bro. No, 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 no. This is just life observation. 
plant your seeds in your 20s, whatever the nature of those seeds might be, so that they might sprout in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, until your dying day. How you manage that is deeply mysterious because, again, there isn't a silver bullet formula for this stuff. It is capricious. Life, by its very nature, is capricious. All you can do is try to steer the boat in the right direction. But being aware of the fact that you have to steer the boat is, to be perfectly honest, much more potent than being completely lost up the creek without a paddle, which is what I observe constantly. I know I was for the longest time, and I only came to reality far too late. And many Zoomers deceived by the counterfeit of the online world are being similarly deceived. Just be aware, don't squander your 20s. You only have them once, and they are critical for the rest of your life. As always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons and anyone who donates to me on PayPal. You guys are the best. You support the channel and keep it going. You have my everlasting gratitude. And if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz of liking the video, sharing the video, commenting, and subbing, if you're not yet a sub, much appreciated because my channel is basically shadow banned. It does not get nearly as much traffic as it ideally should. And that's what happens when you're me. In any event, until the next time may the gods watch over you, if I am fortunate enough to still be alive and hale and healthy, I'll check out then. Take care and bye bye for now. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.